Okay, this is the first video in a series of videos that's going to take you through how to take our EEG data and process it into ERPs. Now, if you're a member of the TCNJ ERP lab, you have a protocol to follow that has step-by-step -step instructions. This will give you a visual representation of each of those written steps. There's also more information in the lab manual. Uh, if you're not an ERP lab member, I encourage you to take a look at the documentation for ERP lab that is available online for many of these steps. There's more details uh, about these steps and what they do. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to record files or take files from our stimulus computer on the flash drive, and you're going to copy them to this computer where we're doing processing. Now, everything is done in this TCNJ ERP lab folder. So if we open it up, you'll see that we have a behavioral data folder, and each study has its own folder. So the study that I'll be doing some sampling or processing here is called FDRUG B. So if we open this up, you see that uh, subject 101 has some data files here. So you would copy these data files. We'll be processing 101 in this, sam in this uh, file, or in this uh, video, I should say. And um, each of these files, records information about what happened on the memory test. So if you open this up, this is our drug test, and it gives you trial by trial information, what they saw, what the trial type was, what they said, uh, what the response time, confidence, etc. So all that information is recorded. Now we need this on this computer in some cases because we're going to make use of what people responded or how quickly they responded. So if we do any ERP sorts based on their performance, we need these data files. So it's a good idea to go ahead and copy these in regardless of what uh, we're doing with that particular project. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start up MATLAB. So you just click on this icon down here and it's going to load up MATLAB and MATLAB comes up and first thing you should do is check your directory. We want to be in the TCNJ ERP lab ERP data directory. If it's not there you can probably drop down and find it or you can navigate but you want that to be our place, our, our um, folder that we're working out of. And you'll see files over here on the left. This will expand as we create more data files uh, from our processing. Now the next step, you're going to start EEG Lab. You just type EEG Lab at the MATLAB command window. So you have the command window, you have the files over here to the left, and over here to the right you'll have uh, variables as they appear in MATLAB. So we're going to just you type EEG Lab, lowercase, press enter, and EEG Lab's going to start. You'll see some messages come up here, and EEG Lab is this uh, bluish purple window here. Now, the first thing that we're going to do in EEG Lab is import our data set. So, our data set is recorded in Curry. We use Neuroscan amplifiers, a Grail amplifier, and we use Curry 8 to record the data. So, we're going to go to File, Import Data. E using EEG lab functions and plugins, and we're going to open up a Neuroscan Curry file. Now you won't see anything here because this is ERP data. What we want to do is go back one directory, TCNJ ERP lab, and go to the EEG data directory. I do this so that you don't inadvertently uh, delete or remove some files. So here you'll see the EEG data that's stored, and when you're using Curry 8, Curry 8 automatically names the subject file and saves it. So we have subject 101, and we have 102, so the next person that would be tested would be 103, et cetera. So you're going to select the subject that you want to process. We're going to do 101 in our example here, and you click Open. Now that's going to load it up into EEG Lab. You'll see the data file come up here at the top, and you'll see some characteristics. So here's the data file, characteristics of our data file that we have in memory. So that's good. Now, uh, the first thing that we're going to do with the data file now that it's been imported is we're going to change the sampling rate. So one of the things you'll see is the sampling rate, 2048 hertz. That's, we have to do that with our Grail amplifier, but that's super high. We don't need that many samples. So we're going to downsample. This will decrease the file size uh, and make things a little bit more uh, easier to process. So you can see the sampling rate is up here is 2048. We're going to change it to 256. Now I'm toying with the idea of changing it to 250. So in the future, you might put 250 in this box, uh, but for right now, use 256 and click OK. And you're going to get a save window that's going to come up, and I'll pull it down so you can see it. So each time you save it, you're going to click the save file, overwrite memory, and we're going to save it by subject number 101, and then an underscore, and then what we did. So it's 256 hertz downsampling. If in the future we go to 250, you would write 250 hertz downsample, and you're going to click OK. 
So we've downsampled. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to filter the data. So we do uh, Fourier filtering. So we filter the data, basic FIR filter, and we're going to get this pop-up box. And so in here, you're going to put, and now all of these details are in the protocol, of course. So you're going to put 0 0.1 and 30 for our uh, filter settings. And we don't need to plot the frequent res response. You can if you want to, but it's just another window to close. And we're just going to click OK. Down here, you see it's filtering the data, and it's going to give us a save to save the new data file. So we're going to cut and paste, and FILT, by the way, I'm just highlighting and doing Control C to copy the file name so you don't have to retype it uh, each time. We're going to add a little bit to each file name so that we know what we've done at each stage uh, when it's saved. Uh, so in the next file, or in the next um, video, rather, uh, I'm going to show you how to create an events list, but let me just point out that each time you save it, you can see the files appearing over here. And each time you save it, there's a set file and an FDT file. So that should be happening over here on the left. You can check your progress and make sure that the files are saving like they should.